I want to start by saying it's going very well. Uh, there are some bad spots in Pennsylvania where uh, some serious things have been caught or in the process of being caught. But uh, the election itself is uh, going very well. We're leading, I believe, in all seven swing states. What are you talking about? You're leading in all seven swing states. They haven't counted the vote, you deluded old man lying to your base. Now, some of you might say, well, yeah, no, they haven't counted them, but we do know the party ID of those who voted. Okay, well, then in that case, the Democrats are definitely leading in all of them. So again, what are you talking about, you deranged old fool? But there, what you see isn't just Donald Trump doing his best with what's left of his brain, it's him using a strategy, which is to convince everyone that supports him, we're up, we're up big, we've always been up. So if Harris wins the action on election day, then clearly something suspicious happened and maybe anything is acceptable to right that wrong. And so Donald Trump is going full court press on trying to push the idea that there's massive voter fraud going on. He, uh, he truthed this, Wow, your county, Pennsylvania, received thousands of potentially fraudulent voter registration forms and mail and ballot applications from a third party group. Really bad stuff. Why is stuff in quotation marks? I'll never understand. What is going on in Pennsylvania? Wow. So, look, did they receive a lot of voter, voter registration forms from an organization? Yes. Are they potentially fraudulent? Well, yes because they're forms and they could be fraudulent. He's implying that there's a reason to believe they're fraudulent, which does not exist. So again, he would love to have you know 2000 mules or something that he could point to that'd be suspicious. But in the absence of that, he's gonna take literally anything that happens and imply that it's evidence of fraud, even though it is not. Now look, here's the thing. Even if they receive thousands of applications from one group, which might seem suspicious, they check all of them. Nobody just gets to vote because, ah, oh, what are you gonna do? There's a lot of you. That's not how it works. The system is continuing to work as it's supposed to, which is not to say that there isn't some chaos. Ballot drop boxes have been set on fire in Oregon and Washington, almost certainly by Republicans. But the sick way our system works is Republicans can commit acts of political terrorism against ballot drop boxes and then use that as justification to reject the votes of other areas. Hopefully that won't work. Um, and I also do want to let people know, because I think you might have referenced this, uh, David, earlier in the show. The GOP is asking the Supreme Court to reject provisional ballots from Pennsylvania voters who botched their mail ones. So the Pennsylvania Supreme Court had already ruled that if you make a mistake on your mail ballots, you can instead submit a provisional ballot on election day. Only one of your ballots will ever be counted. And it seems reasonable that if you make a mistake and you're responsible and you try to write it, you should still be allowed to vote. The GOP is saying no. If you identify that you made a mistake, you should not get to fix it. You should not be able to vote at all, even though there is every reason to believe that many of those people will be Republicans. So that is what the Republicans think about democracy and even the voices of their own voters being heard. A storm is tearing up the digital media industry. Only our audience can save us in these difficult times. Help us reach our goal of 100,000 new members at tyt.com slash team. Schuster, yeah, I know I threw out a lot there, but what do you think? Well, I was gonna say it matters because imagine a scenario where Pennsylvania is within a couple of thousand votes and nobody really knows what the outcome is because you've got this outstanding pool of votes, maybe a few thousand that are in this batch that are subject to the Supreme Court ruling and it kicks up to the US Supreme Court and, and then what? Uh, that would be a nightmare scenario. But I think your larger point is really, really important worth uh, remembering. And that is, I think there've been several steps, not only by Donald Trump, by surrogates, by the Trump campaign to essentially uh, grease the, the the landing in a sense to prepare everybody for saying that this election is fraudulent if Kamala Harris gets more votes. And so by putting out all these ridiculous polls for the last month by organizations we've never heard of, but that have ties to Donald Trump and conservatives, Donald Trump can now point to and say, well, wait a second, you know, we, this must have been a fraudulent election because look at all those polls who showed that I was leading in these battleground states. There's no way Kamala Harris could have won by four and five points, even though there's no scientific basis for a lot of these polls. And we have evidence as far as what the results will be on election night when the votes start coming in. But that's the kind of craziness 
that Donald Trump is engaged to now to prepare in case he wants to say this thing was stolen. Yeah, which again, look, if she wins, he's going to try to steal it. We we don't know how hard he'll go. We don't know how many allies he'll he'll have. We don't know how many aspects to the attempt to steal it there will be. A lot of that is going to depend on what the victory looks like. If she if it's totally overwhelming, maybe he's alone. He says some crazy things and it diffuses or whatever. But it's definitely going to happen. So everybody, you do need to be prepared for next Tuesday. But you also need to be prepared for the three months or so after it. We need her to win, and then we need her win to actually be accepted by the systems in place. And so there's a lot to come. I know it's a lot, but we're gonna we're gonna try to get through it together. When you click the join button and become a tier two member, you get access to all of our weekly top 10 lists. What are you waiting for?